everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another episode of Tech Girl Thursdays. Today I am here with Haley and we are going to be talking about her experiences in the tech field. I'm so excited to talk. Woo! <laughs> so good to talk to you. I'm excited to be on here. <laughs> Could you give an intro about yourself, your background, and any interests and hobbies you have? So uh, my name is Haley, like Shalini said. Um, and uh, I had got my undergraduate degree uh, at Georgia Tech in electrical engineering, and now I'm getting my master's degree in electrical engineering at Georgia Tech. Um, so my big focus is electromagnetics, um, which is kind of like radio wave things like RF stuff, Wi-Fi and all that good stuff. Um, and some hobbies I have are, I love photography um, and I love drawing. So I also kind of have that RC side a little bit too. How did you first get into the tech field? So I think from when I was really young, my parents were really good about kind of encouraging me into going into where, whatever I wanted to do. Um, and I think very early on, I realized that there wasn't anything other than kind of engineering or hands-on stuff that I would want to do. Like I, I need to have that kind of hands-on feel, building something, making something um, in my field. So like I loved physics um, and I was lucky enough to go to a school where they had a circuits lab that I could like learn basic electronics in. Um, and so I think that lab was really where I kind of discovered that I really liked that. And then um, I, at the time I was kind of debating between aerospace and electrical, um, but found out you can do electrical and aerospace. So it kind of, there was a, a long progression leading up to my electrical engineering decision. <laughs> yeah, it seems very hands-on, which is really cool. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, that, that's really cool that you were able to like find a place like with a lab where you could actually like work on things. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, electrical engineering is so cool in that like I found that you can do a lot of hands-on stuff, but there's also kind of the up, total opposite side of it for other people where you can do a lot of more software stuff um, and more designing on a computer if that's that's what you prefer. So that's so that's the great thing about electrical engineering too is that you can do pretty much anything you want with it, right? So like um, I don't know, you can do electronics for like a John Deere um, heavy machinery thing, or you can do um, like mini circuit boards. You can do like quadcopters or like and literally anything you can think of. There's, you can do electrical engineering for them, um, which is such a cool thing where you can do any industry you want with one degree, which I think is really awesome. <laughs> so. A little bias. Though. What was your experience in undergrad studying um, electrical engineering and how has um, doing grad school been? There was actually a time in my undergrad where I kind of um, wasn't sure if I wanted to continue with electrical engineering actually because I hadn't found the spot that I really loved which was electromagnetics. Um, it's kind of like a cross between physics and electrical engineering which is where I found my niche. But so the first, like the electrical engineering classes were the ones that I was doing my worst in um, until I hit that. And I was like debating switching over to aerospace or something. Um, and then I found electrical, uh, electromagnetics. Um, and that was kind of like, I took every electromagnetics class I could after that. So that was like the highlight of all of my classes. Um, and not gonna lie, that very difficult, but <laughs> got through it um, and apparently I liked school enough to continue with my master's. Um, so I, part of the reason I got into my master's was just because there was a lot more uh, that I wanted to learn specifically about electromagnetics. So I found there was a lot more classes I could take in the, my master's program. So that's kind of where I'm at now. Um, and uh, it's interesting the difference between master's and undergrad classes because master's um, depends on the class, obviously, but it's a lot, it's more or less the same, but it's just a lot harder material <laughs> and you don't do as much like busy work. So there's not as many homeworks, 
it's just like you do one big project or you do one big exam and then that's about the whole semester yeah I feel I feel that for masters it's um similar to undergrad but it's harder material <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> and it's also like more focused on the learning at least for yes. me I, I is I've it? definitely found that too but it's more about yeah it's definitely about the learning in electromagnetic classes mm -hmm. what type of like work are you doing like is it a lot of hands-on projects labs um or is it more like theory type of stuff um so it depends there there's a good amount of both of them so with my master's classes uh it's been a lot more theory um because i'm doing the class option so i'm doing the non-thesis option so i'm not doing a lot of research um so it's been a lot of theory for my master's degree in my undergrad I took an antenna engineering class. So um, that one was hands-on. It had a lab and a classroom portion. So in the lab, we actually got to use uh, like sing signal generators and got to make like mini antennas um, and actually design and fab those. Uh, so that was really hands-on and I loved that. Uh, and there's also, we learned how to use different modeling softwares, which is, kind of hands-on depending on how you think about it um yeah but a lot of it's it's a mixed bag kind of you can go for what you want to go for what's it been like your favorite class so far out of Ooh. electromagnetic classes? Out of electromagnetic classes that's a tough question i mean i really loved the antenna engineering class that one was really awesome that one sounds uh, cool yeah yeah oh yeah it was like i got i got to use all of these real world tools that I mean, that real engineers uh, use to design like different antennas for like RFIDs and all, all the fun stuff. Um, but I also had one class in my undergraduate, which was electromagnetic applications or applications of electromagnetics. And I, I, that one talked about how you actually apply it in the real world, world too, like across the board. So like radars and antennas and uh, like Wi-Fi and communications and talked about all the different applications. Um, and like you can use it for sensors too. So just talking about all of that was really cool to see like how how far you can go and like how much you can do with it. And learning about that was really cool. So you mentioned aerospace engineering, yes. um, which is something that you're interested in. Yes, and, for sure. Um, you've had several different internships related to that so yeah. how have those internships been and also like what what type of work do you do in the aerospace industry like i guess yeah. at a broad level like what what does like working in the aerospace industry with ee mean this will start start off talking about my internships um i was fortunate enough to be able to work uh with nasa um for one summer and that was really, or for two summers, sorry. Uh, and then a de defense contractor for another summer. Um, so at NASA, I had two very different projects. One was kind of setting up some radios to help set transmit information. Um, and then the other one was to help with a new navigation system they're gonna use for a project down the line to help pilots kind of accomplish the mission. Uh, most efficiently and most accurately. Uh, so those two are very different projects, but it kind of shows you the two different areas that, at least two different areas that electrical engineers can go into. So like radios, uh, so communication systems is a big one. The, I mean, you have to work on the data links and there's, that's kind of electromagnetics. There's a, um, there's a component of electromagnetics to that you have to actually establish the link. Um, and then there's like different, another side of it to actually sending the information <laughs> um, and encoding the information and all of that. Um, and then you can also do programming. So as an electrical engineer, it doesn't it mean you can't do programming. Like you're not, you might not be, you might not do it at a higher level, but it depends on how much experience you have. Like it doesn't preclude you from becoming basically a software engineer. Um, and then as with the defense contractor, I worked on a radar or worked on um, modeling a radar. 
so that's like that was my first step into like purely electromagnetic search which was incredible and that's kind of again where I got <laughs> really excited about it um, and I learned how to use a software to model it um, HFSS if anybody's if you've heard of that probably not <laughs> um, and yeah so there, there's a wide variety of things you can do with an aerospace um, like if you think about just just building an airplane just like think about an airplane you have all of these systems that are electrical now right so you have the navigation system um, and you have to connect that to the plane you have to power it on the plane so just the all of the power on the plane that's an electrical engineer checking all of that um, and then avionics so communication systems are major uh, that is an electrical engineer working on that um, the antenna is transmitting the data between like kind of on the radio system that's an electrical engineer working on that. Um, a lot of planes are now doing fly by wire. Basically, instead of having mechanical links to the different parts of the airplane, it's an electrical signal. So it's so it's there's no actual control link uh, or there's no yeah, no physical link use electronics pretty much. Um, and they they implemented that in some of the bigger airplanes just because it was the mechanical linkages were so heavy that you pretty much couldn't be very accurate on the plane <laughs> with the, the controls on the plane. So like the, the flaps on the plane, which kind of slow down the plane um, and ailerons and all that fun stuff that that's controlled on certain planes by electronics. So there's a lot of space there for uh, an electrical engineer in aerospace, but there's also so many other things too, like you cover satellites, um, again, communication systems, electrical engineer is going to be doing that. And all of, you have to figure out how to power the satellite while it's in space. <laughs> so you have to keep it powered because once that power runs out, you have a pe floating piece of trash <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> um, so well, that's an electrical engineer. Um, Radar is like I mentioned, electrical engineer. So there, and, uh, it, so there, there's really, there's space for an electrical engineer everywhere in aerospace, pretty much. That's, that's amazing. I feel like when people think of a plane, they don't think about all the intricacies, no, but yeah. it's, but there's so much like involved with, you know, building a plane, thinking about, you know, the different controls and the power and yeah. just all of the different things that you mentioned and you can't, you can't do it without um like electrical engineers you don't think about like you like you said you don't think about the electrical engineers when you're thinking about a plane because you when you think plane aerospace engineer because they're the ones who build the frame but everything inside of that is more or less electrical yeah <laughs> you have to think about power and everything so in terms of like all these internships and the work that you've been doing in class um what skills would you say are the most important that you've learned um, and applied? Take aside any sort of technical skills. I think the biggest thing that I've learned from all those is just how to problem solve, like all of my internships and all of my classes, it, because um, like for that navigation system I was working on, what I was coding was mostly in Python. And I hardly ever used Python before. So I had to really kind of go on and figure out, like I knew I know how to code, like the things, so the things I knew, how to code, how generally Python works, like what other programming languages look like and what I had to do. So pretty much I had to say, okay, this is what I know how to do. This is what I gotta do. And how do I get between the two is mostly just Google. <laughs> talking to my mentor and trying things out. So you kind of figuring out how to do something that I don't necessarily, you know, know how to do 100% was, was something I really big I learned there and kind of talking to other people to figure things out. Um, so I think problem solving, that's a really big one that I learned um, and kind of talking like communications with other people. Um, and on a technical side, I mean, knowing basic programming is super important. 
um, I think in electrical engineering, not that you, you won't necessarily have to use programming, um, but knowing how it works is, I mean, you de that's definitely going to be in the coursework for an electrical engineer. Um, at least one or two classes, like you're going to have it. So yeah, programming is really important because it kind of gets the right thinking pattern going for uh, the rest of your classes. Yeah, I can imagine like problem solving is a huge part of it. And yeah. just because, I mean, I think with anything in tech and probably especially like electrical engineering and aerospace, um, things are constantly changing, like oh, yeah. different technologies. So sure. I think once you learn something like it, <laughs> like you're going to have to learn something else. So figuring yeah. out how to kind of transfer like that, how to learn and how exactly went through that process to the yeah. next thing yeah when you say how to learn like that's I mean I feel like that's one of the big things that that college is really trying to teach you is how to learn uh after the fact because there's no way that a college degree could teach you every every single thing that you need to know for your career like that there's no way that's gonna happen unless it was like a hundred years long right um <laughs> so that learning how to learn is so big because uh, you're going to have to learn on the job. I mean, different jobs have different ways. Sometimes they'll like teach you how to do everything before you start. But a lot of the time is just kind of you learning along the way and asking questions, uh, asking like clarifications. You kind of have to have you have to learn how to learn uh, on the job. So just kind of in general, electrical engineering, what's your favorite part about electrical engineering and what would you say, like on the flip side, what's the hardest part? I mean, I think I, I mean, one thing that I really do love about electrical engineering is how much you can do with it, like how many different areas you can go into um, and that, yeah, you can apply it to anything. Yeah, I guess that that would be what it that that's my favorite thing is that you can you can do literally anything you want with it. It's kind of like programming in that way, I guess. You can do so many things with it. Uh, and I guess my least favorite thing about it is that it's hard. <laughs> it can be really hard at the beginning learning all of it. Um, so I guess that would be my least favorite thing. But it's worth it. The hard it's it's worth it. So going off of like the part it's hard I know like when some things are hard some people tend to you know get discouraged yeah. and maybe leave it how yeah. how do you how do you stay motivated when like what you're learning is really hard so I think one of the things that helps me is just remembering that one there's a reason I'm doing this like I know it's hard right now but I love doing like I love doing this like this is the area I love learning about so it sucks right now but I know that this is what I wanted to do like this is what I want to do um, and keeping in mind like what your goals are so um, saying like I want to be an electrical engineer I want to work in aerospace like that I need to go through this class I need to go through this topic in order to be better equipped to be an electrical engineer in aerospace, right? So kind of remembering my goals in life and knowing that it's gonna be done sooner or later. <laughs> um, and I, I chose to do this, this is on me. I, I wanted to do this and it's not like somebody forced me to. A lot of good self-care in there, you know? <laughs> yes. eat sometimes, sleep. <laughs> Yeah, no, those are those are really good points. I think making sure that you're like centered on that goal and you keep mm -hmm. coming back to that. Like, why, why are you doing this? Yeah. And yeah, I mean, hopefully if you're doing it, you enjoy it. Yeah. Because <laughs> I think that makes things a lot better. Just yeah. kind of like, oh, okay, this is like the end goal and I really want to get here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know there's definitely classes that, that you do have to you do have to take and it's just like I hate this class but it's it's worth it to take the classes that you do like it's just like I, I take this class and next semester I get to take this super awesome class that I'm super excited about because it's in the area that I really want to work in after I graduate so kind of yeah like I said focusing on the end goal
in terms of learning mm-hmm. more about electrical engineering like are there any resources that helped you learn or was it mostly just kind of classes and internships so in terms of learning about what electrical engineering has to offer um what at the very beginning, I want to talk to professors. So I think that's that's like the number one way you can learn about the different areas of, I mean, whatever field, is going and talking to your major specific professors. Like um, the way I learned about more about electromagnetics was we have an intro to electromagnetics that everybody has to take. So I went and talked to my professor after class, went in office hours and just said like, hey, what research do you do? What what type of stuff do you do? Um, And he just told me all about his research. Like he was modeling electromagnetics for airplanes. And it was like, that is so cool. So going and talking because professors absolutely love to talk about their research because at least at Georgia Tech, but like a lot of them are there for research and teaching. So asking them what they do outside of teaching is like, the best thing you could do. Um, and then once I kind of I asked him about research and I realized that I loved electromagnetics, I asked him like, what are these other classes that I can take? Like, what else can I do with this field? Um, so really going and talking to professors is really great. Um, and then also if people want to learn more about um, electrical engineering in general, um, I think IEEE, which is kind of the, um, professional organization for electrical engineers, uh, going on and looking at their stuff uh, is, is a good way to learn about it because they have a lot of uh, great research papers to look at, but also I think they have some other information on there as well. Um, also, YouTube is a great, great place to find some stuff, so. <laughs> so like being in a tech field, like being in a technical yeah. major and stuff, you've worked at like tech internships um so what has your experience been like as a woman in tech overall I I think I've been really fortunate that I haven't like I've been treated like a normal employee like it's I haven't had that many experiences with sexism or anything like that um I mean I think the one example I can think of of somebody being like really obnoxious was there is I went to an interview with a company um, which I won't mention their name because that's rude. Um, and one of the, so they brought us in, there was an in, interview day um, and they brought some other interns in to like kind of talk to us. Um, and one of them started hitting on me. And it was just like, this is, this is an interview day where they're trying to get me to come here and you're hitting on me. Like asking, it's like, oh, what you doing tonight? And it's just like, well, I'm going home far away from here. <laughs> So, but I've been very fortunate that over, I mean, the six years that I've been kind of in tech, that's the only, that's the only time I've ever really experienced any sort of sexism or, you know, awkwardness because of me being a woman. Like, that's one of the only times. So, like, yeah, I've been, I've been extremely fortunate. Even I've heard other people have far different experiences, but, um, People treat me with respect and listen to what I have to say. So honestly, it's, it's, been, it's been really great for me. Um, and I, I really hope that the rest of the world can move that way too so that more people, more women can experience that. Because, I mean, you know that you probably heard so many stories of people being awful humans to women. So yeah, I, th- I, I think I hope it's a, I think it's a kind of a signal of, the way things are moving so yay okay well I'm glad that you had you've had like very positive experience yeah. except for that like one time yeah <laughs> one dude Hello. <laughs> yeah I, I don't know like w- why people think it's okay to like in an interview in a professional setting yeah to do that but that's what and that's one of the big things I hope and I'm like I kind of you look for in companies before you join it's like that's a for one thing, that's a huge red flag that that happens. It's just like, do I really want to work for that company? Um, but also in companies that you're looking for, like you're looking at working with, you look at, do they have like a women's resource group um, or like kind of how are the women, how do they treat the women? Kind of you, you look for um, how much they talk about it 
talk about accepting women um, and kind of base, you have to gauge uh, how much you want to work for them on that. I feel like every, every woman I've talked to has like considered those things. It's really just like a marginalized group sort of thing. Like if you're, if you're in a marginalized group, like if you're a woman, person of color or um, part of the LGBTQ community, like that's something that you really have to think about. No, just like thinking about those things is, I feel like it's just really important just like knowing Mm. the company culture. Oh yeah, for sure. And like hearing, I mean, like talking to previous or current previous employees just seeing like what their experiences have been like yeah um employee resource groups like you said I think a lot of companies are coming out with that more um to support employees which is really nice yeah I feel like we kind of look at those factors and then determine whether it's like safe to move forward or like in no way (laughs) and I mean it's funny because I mean if you sometimes it's actually like if we think about those things all the time but for for men too it's like if they're treating women like that so like it it might be an indication that company culture itself isn't that great anyway so um I don't know maybe men should think about that more too because it could affect them (laughs) more what would you like to see companies do in the future to better support women or minorities that's a tough question I mean for for one thing for sure more women in leadership um I mean the number of women in CEO roles like high up roles is way too low um in a lot of companies so kind of promoting women um that that's one big thing uh I mean taking serious steps uh when sexual harassment and that is reported I know a lot of companies, HR, I mean, HR for a lot of companies is really to protect the company. Um, So kind of actually doing things about that uh, and taking complaints seriously from women and kind of promoting that culture, which is really hard to do, I know, because when you're dealing with an established company, it's, it's been ingrained in the company for so many years and it's kind of become that so it's, it's difficult to kind of turn that momentum around and get, get it going the, the right way. Um, and when you're talking about the companies that are maybe doing a little bit of performative activism, um, activism, it would, I'm, I'm not mad about that. Um, but <laughs> there's also, you need kind of, I'd like to see them move away from the performative part and actually start implementing those changes that they're talking about within their own company. Um, instead of just saying, yeah, women, yeah, support Black businesses, like, <laughs> it's have them actually, you know, be telling that to their own employees and kind of promoting that within instead of just saying, we believe this, you know. Um, yeah, I don't know, that is such a tough question. Because, like I said, it's a lot of these companies is, they've been around for a while. So it's difficult it's like trying to change a bad habit really and try to get a good habit going it takes a while so start now that's a really good analogy actually like trying to change a bad habit because I feel it like these things are super ingrained and Mm -hmm. like I mean if you've been doing something for a while you're like just more likely to continue doing it like I I think that's just how we work as humans yeah um, exactly what are what are some of your goals for the future with mm-hmm. you know finishing up school and then afterwards so career life in general yeah. after I graduate uh, in the next year with my master's I'm going to go into a full-time career as electrical engineer hopefully in electromagnetics uh, is what I'm going to be doing um, and I don't, from there, I just want to stay in aerospace. I, I'm really kind of up in the air about what specifically I want to do, um, but I know it's going to be somehow related to electrical engineering, and I know it's going to be somehow related to aerospace, and specifically electromagnetics in there, because it's a good overlap between the two. Um, I think I want to start out with more a more technical side of things, so work more in the small details, 
and then kind of more then move towards more system engineering. So looking at kind of a higher level uh, project, kind of putting different units together. Um, and then, I mean, my dream job would be to be an astronaut, but <laughs> that's that's a couple of years down the road still. I think I need to get a little more experience, but no, someday, someday. That's so cool, becoming an astronaut. Oh it'd, be, it'd be awesome. I, yeah. In some shape or form, I want to go to space. So it makes sense to be an astronaut because they pay you to do that. So Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, I think we're, we're definitely like heading in that direction. Yeah. So there's, yeah, yeah. There's been, there's been good backing and funding for, uh, um, for the space program recently, which is, has been really great to see. So yeah. I, hopefully, hopefully it's going to keep going with that because it does kind of depend on uh, the administration a little bit. So right, right. Yeah. <laughs> see what happens. Yeah. yeah. What advice would you give to people who are interested in tech or maybe they aren't sure Ooh. if they're interested in it or not like what what advice would you give so for anybody yeah so for anybody who's interested in tech or thinks they might be interested in tech i i mean the i guess the most i can say is try it like go on and and find out what all you can do with it i mean the internet now is like just google stuff and you're going to be able to find so much information so kind of don't be don't be discouraged um if you see all of these people out there with like crazy projects at like age 12 or whatever, because there's some like incredible prodigies, but that's not the majority of, of people who work in tech. Um, so if you don't know how to program and you're kind of like, ah, I'm too old, like, how do I do this? Like, I maybe I shouldn't be in tech because I'm not already doing these crazy projects. Like, just try, like, try it out. Um, and really, you're never it's never too late to get into it. Um, like if you're starting, like you had no programming experience in high school or like your first year of college or something, and then you want to get into CS, like go for it. And I mean, it might be more difficult to see and like you see all of your classmates getting way ahead or like, I don't not getting way ahead, but like they seem like they know what they're doing. Half the time, for one thing, they don't know what they're doing, but also like you can do it, you can do it. Um, that's, I guess that's about it. Try, try it, try it out, find out what there is. Um, talk to people, like you can, yeah, talk to people um, about tech things. <laughs> and there's also, I also just want to say, there's something in tech for everybody. Like there's, if you want it, anything you want to do, there, there's a bunch of, there's so many different areas that you can get into. Yeah, very true. Yeah, there's, yeah, li literally. <laughs> you can combine I feel like any field and any like any like technology or software or hardware or anything and like there's there's like some combination yeah exactly yes like <laughs> there's crazy combinations like you want to do like you want to do athletics like you want to work in athletics you can design tech for athletics yeah like yeah. anything anything you can get into yeah yeah that's one of the coolest parts yeah <laughs> Thank you so much, Haley, for joining me on this Zoom Welcome. call today. Um, it was so much fun talking with you and learning more about electrical engineering and aerospace and electromagnetics and all your experiences. So, <laughs> Thanks for having me. Everyone, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in another episode next week. Bye.